Okay, we are about to go live, Rita. Okay. Looks, everything looks on track. Yeah, I think we're fine. <laughs> Great. So we're very excited. We've got a minute to go. So <laughs> shall we start? Are you good? Uh -huh. Yeah, great. So good evening, everybody. Good evening, Facebook family. Good evening to everybody who watches us on live stream now and later. We are so excited this evening. Another dynamite, dynamite lady with us. And on behalf of Succeed, on behalf of Richard Maestri and myself and Patrick Stevens, we would like to say a very warm welcome. We're very excited to be spending um, a Saturday evening with you. And uh, thank you for taking the time to, to chat to us and to, um, you know, also be inspired and to allow us to sow seeds of hope into your life. Um, Rita Govinda is a dear friend and family uh, through marriage and the, the senior leader at Livestreams International. Um, Rita is a mom of two and has been uh, married for 26 years, a rare thing this day and age. And what a blessing, Rita. <laughs> welcome, yeah. welcome. Thank you. Um, well, good evening, everybody. And I'm so deeply humbled to uh, be part of this great team this evening. Uh, thank you, Nishani. And thank you to Richard and to Patrick, the guys that are working in the background to make this platform possible. Um, and good evening, dear listeners. Thank you for taking time to just share uh, with us in this evening. And I pray that this will uh, be a blessed time together um, as we continue. Thank you. Rita, maybe for those of us who don't know you and those of us listening in, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, sure. Um, okay, so I, I think um, maybe I, I just wanted to just say this as well as we continue that um, I know and we've been following you guys so dearly over the last few weeks um, on this you. platform. Um, and I have to um, salute you guys for what an awesome and tremendous job that y'all are doing. Um, and, you know, week after week, you guys are just bringing seeds and ray of hope to every person out there. And in these past few months, uh, this is so needed. This is so needed. And it's such an incredible platform that, um, and I know that it's not just only um, um, through Seeds of Hope, but you guys are so involved in so many uh, other projects that y'all are doing. And um, I just want to salute you and say thank you for such a sterling piece of job that y'all are doing. And because of you, um, dignity will be restored uh, to our nation and hope for a beautiful country um, in our land, South Africa. So uh, we appreciate you and we just want to say um, thank you. Thank you so much for all the hard work. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. It's very moving. We were very excited this week, Rita. Um, we've been talking about the Rebel Sanitary Towels project, and we got a, um, a sponsor from Sarah Gavinger and uh, the school that she works with. And for the first time, we are going to be doing our first delivery on the 5th of October. Um, wow. Which is absolutely thrilling. And also, yes. Possible possible because of the viewers, possible because people have come alongside us. So yeah. just a great big thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for your kind words. Yeah. Wow, that's great news. Um, so awesome, you know. Um, every step is a progress towards the great finish. So um, yeah, keep going, man. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, so I just want to thank God uh, for making this opportunity so possible so I could just come and share um, with us and bring my portion of Seeds of Hope this evening. 
um, you know, when we look at what has just happened in these last few months, and um, we're about to go into level one of the lockdown, and all we can see that everything that was shaken was just shaken across every government, every economy, the families, um, this, this virus that just came uh, from nowhere just brought so much of destruction to people's lives, people's hopes, people's dreams. Um, this virus affected so many people um, that there was so much of loss of lives. And this evening, I, I just want to say to those dear families that lost uh, family and dear friends and loves, loved ones, um, I declare the peace of God and the shalom of God to be your portion through this difficult time. Um, may he give you strength to overcome and um, keep going as well. Um, but I also want to say that we that are here, uh, God has been faithful and he's brought us through. We've made it. We've made it through. Um, and it's uh, such a great day to be alive. And not just to be alive, the fact that we are alive, then surely our work on earth is still not done. He's not finished with us. So we still got so much more to do and to achieve. Um, and a lovely verse that I saw on hope says, in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Um, and I looked at that word deferred, and the actual meaning of that word is delayed over, or overdue. So hope delayed or overdue makes the heart sick. Wow. So wow. I want to say to us that there must be no delay anymore. Yeah. You know, we may have been um, locked down. We may have been stuck within the walls of home and family, but through this course, uh, there has to be something that must come forth for it. It, it, yeah. it was not sent to destroy us um, but, and to take us out, but we are still standing. And, it's, and we thank God that we are still standing. You know, He's given us the grace. And there's so much that has come forth uh, from that as well. So I'm very grateful for that, uh, firstly and foremost, you know. So uh, let me share a little bit about who Rita is. Actually, not too much. Uh, most people say I'm just a very small dynamite girl, but they say that dynamite comes in small packages. So, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> so so yeah. does diamonds, Rita. So does diamonds. Yeah, okay, I, I go with that one. Hey? I think that's the safer way to go with. Um, okay, so I have to say the, the first and foremost thing is that I am so grateful that I'm a son of God. Yeah. And I love God wholeheartedly. Every part of my being, uh, who I am, where I've come from, everything is just in God and for God, nothing but the grace of God over my life. So my whole passion and my whole life encapsulates into uh, he's the sovereign God of my life. So I'm really grateful uh, for, for being a, called a son of God. Um, and then I'm also thankful that um, as the son of God, you know, you have privileges. And yes. as firstborn sons of God, I have the privilege to live under an open heaven of God, you know, um, who, is, who is always there to protect and to guide. And it's in him. And then not only uh, to live under the open heaven, but then I'm also thankful that I have the Holy Spirit uh, in my life, every single moment. You know, you have those moments when you're sure, you're not sure, you know what to do, you don't know what to do. And that is at that moment, you just need the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you. Um, and I thank God for, for that part of my life because uh, that he's ever present there to lead, to guide and to help me through, you know. Uh, so when, when you come from that posture and position, then the only response you have is to, so then what about, what about, what is Rita? What must she do? My whole life then is only to live out the purposes of God in my life and to fulfill his assignment while I'm placed here. 
um, with every passion, with every gifting, with every grace that he's given within me. Um, and not only to live it out, but my desire also is to finish strong. And that when I stand before him one day at the end of my life, I hope to say that I used everything that he placed inside my hands. You know, one of the worst things that we can go through life is to have everything that Father God gave to us and never make use of it to the best of our ability in whatever way or form or norm we could do. You know that feeling, Shani? Okay. Not like to waste. That's all. That's all. That's all. I'm a single mom, and I, I make no apology about nothing gets wasted. You know, yeah. so we recycle, recycle really well. But you know, it's very important what you said, Rita. You said you want to finish strong. You want to be able to 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 go in uh, at the end and say, I did, I did the best that I could with what God has put into my hands. But you know, in this time where there's so much depression, so much loss, so much hurting, and a world where families seems to be falling yeah. apart, and there's a rise of, if you want to call it evil, in every form of violence, um, what, how, how do you do it, what's the nugget, aside, I mean, I know that the Holy Spirit guides us, but like, yeah. how do you push yourself out of that, that rut to have this hope, and to, to still persevere in times like this? Um, yeah, well, you know, like I just said, it's that God factor inside of you to know um, as long as you belong in him and he is there for you, everything inside of you, um, he'll give you the grace and the function mm -hmm. and the unction to do it and complete it and get over it, you know, get through it. You know, the storms of life are raging in all sorts and in all forms mm -hmm. and, and, and life is not the bed of roses it comes with its challenges as well but you know as long as we know that we are his and we have god inside of us because you know the word says um god inside of me the hope of glory christ in yeah. me the hope of glory and then i can do all things through christ that strengthens me you know these things are not just scripture and it's not just words and it's not just cliches or whatever it's in those moments that you go through in your life when you don't know what side to turn or what to do next and and you know you know who to turn to because sometimes you know the, they they say that the arms of flesh will fail you, uh, you know situations people will turn their back on you. Who do you go to? Your only source can be is run to God because uh, He created you. He knows the end from the beginning for your life, either which way. Um, yeah. you're, you, you start in him, you move in him, you end in him. So uh, everything's going to be okay. And he's going to take you, you know, he's going to take you onto the other side. You know, when the storms come, work through it, go through the challenge. Not every challenge that's there is going to take you out because his word says that um, I promised you, I have plans to prosper you and never to harm you. So God's assignment agenda is not to take you out. He's going to give, if, if he's taking you through that problem, he's going to give you the grace and the, the, the strength to overcome, to prevail and to get through it, you know. And, and you come through that storm, you come through that challenge. You don't just stay there, but you persevere. You keep going, you keep moving forward because going back is not an option. Uh, we've come, we worked too hard to come that road. So there's no way of turning back. And our only way is moving forward. So we're going to move forward, come high water, come rain, come storms. We're going to cross over and we're going to get to the other side. We're going to get to the other side where we're going to fulfill the dreams, where we're going to see these things come to reality. You know, all the visions, all the dreams, everything that we're working so hard for. We must see the manifestation. We must see the fruit of our labor. We must see the bigger picture. We must see the final print and we must rejoice as well. You know, I, you know, we thank God for the sufferings. We thank God for the trials. We thank God for the difficulties. But we also want to rejoice as well because... Uh, we have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. And life is fun. You know, we don't have to get stuck and bogged out and roll over and die. Uh -uh, because... 
uh, God has given us a conquering spirit. You know, the same Christ uh, lives in me. He rose up and he conquered death. He conquered the, uh, yeah. the enemy. And, and the same Christ lives in me. So if he can, and if I'm son of God, then I can do it too. You know, uh, there's no quitting here. We, we're going to run. I'm going to need you, my sister, to come and hold me and pull me yeah. across to the finish line. And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. We're going to get there. You know, one of the things about lockdown that's been a gift, a personal gift for me, is that I started logging into your um, services um, yeah. on Wednesdays and on Sundays. And, and really just by the nudge of the Holy Spirit saying to me, you know, check what's happening. And, you know, one of the things that actually blew my mind, and I knew it was God then, was that I... I um, in my own weakness, and I had an expectation of, oh yeah, you know, this is what it would be like because I left Tonga almost 20 years ago and it was a yeah, very different yeah. experience. So I, I expected the church to be in that vein, not that, yeah. you know, not, not, not to speak down or disrespectful, but, but yeah. what I found, what I found with, with, the, with life with a few other churches in Tonga is that something was different. And you know what, what got me was the fact that you and Shane have are sort of equal partners in the ministry, you know, and there's no, there's no, you could see that there was no power play, there was no issues in terms of where women should be in the church, what, what that would be like, you know, or the role of that, it was just there. And so, you know, without the, the big city lights and the cliches that we use in the women empowerment yeah. world, and I don't want to use those cliches here tonight because oh. we're speaking about sons of sons of God and we're speaking about our identity in God. But yeah. there was something there that drew me, that was authentic yeah. and that was real. And that you guys were just matter of factly doing this thing, you know? Yeah. And and I was excited about that. And I, and I, I mean I, I still I still you know log in uh, quite regularly. So it's been quite uh, it's been quite eye opening for me. But let's talk about yeah. that a little bit. Let's talk about because you know family is, is the cornerstone of God's plan for, for the world. You know, Absolutely. so let's talk a bit about that because I think that you and Shane have um, there's something there that's just wonderful, and I, I yeah. want to celebrate that with you tonight and and share with us what that is. Sure. Um, yeah, so I don't know um, how long since you've been um, uh, down to Tonga. Oh, okay, right. I know you've been here in December. Okay. Mm. So yeah, a little town and um, I can't say that uh, too much has changed, but I know that there are plans coming up and, and we believe that God is going to change the landscape of our little town. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I was, I was, I was looking at it and, and um, there's, I don't know if you know, but uh, Utongati or Tongat um, actually means a little place of great significance. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, you know, I, and there's been so much of prophetic word over this little town. And, mm. you know, I want to believe and, and know that, um, yeah, we, we may not be the up and budding town right now, but I believe that from this little place of insignificance, there are many people that have uh, left this, the, 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 this, this, this land or little town, but are yeah. creating significant moves all around the world. You know, uh, this has been the launching pad for them, and they are strategically placed all around the world, and they are living their dreams and they are touching other people's lives, you know. So when you look at it and you say, what good can come out from an insignificant place? I want to say that very significant people can come out from an insignificant place that can make very strategic moves uh, and, and, yeah. and be on cutting edge and fulfill their dreams and, and make um, uh, impact in people's lives, you know. So... This little place of insignificance are still doing great things, you know, in our little stride. <laughs> so maybe just a little um, uh, thing about our church and, and our ministry. Maybe that's where it also was birthed for us as well. You know, a couple of years ago, um, a very strong prophetic um, service at church and one of the visions of uh, 
that came and the utterances that came is that, um, you know, God uh, is going to break the limitation of the small mindset, you know, the small church mindset yes. and seeing ourselves as small, you know. And, and I thank God, you know, in Romans, it says that, um, you know, transformation comes by the renewal of your mind and your thinking. And I thank God that he broke that mindset over our life, that we stop to see ourselves as small and insignificant. You know, what can this little church do? And I thank God that because that was a, a catalyst moment for our life, because from hence, from that moment, we start to see ourselves big, you know, yes. and we start to think big and envision big and and look for the greater things to come. I mean, when I see what God has done for us just in this past six months, it just blows my mind, you know. I mean, like when people that are connecting to us from all over the world and would send mm -hmm. us messages to say how encouraged. So we got to believe, you know, we, we need to take that more a small set mentality off, you know, and think that God has greater in store for us. And, and when you trust him explicitly and obey his word, then he will accomplish things in and through our lives beyond we can even imagine, you know. Um, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you talk about Ephesians, exceedingly abundantly, more than we can even ask or even we can even fathom, you know. So I thank God that he shifted our thinking, he renewed our thinking pattern, yeah. he transformed us, and that's how he brought um, that breakthrough for us that we'll be able to touch and impact you know one of the visions for our house is um, that God will raise us uh, as 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 people come into the house they are refreshed they are renewed um, and they are refueled to go out and let the river flow and bring healing to the land yes. bring healing to the broken hearted set the capture free bring joy in the streets you know turn lives around and it's not just about containing it in the four walls you know uh, the kingdom must be extend, uh, expanded beyond the four walls of the house you know we must go wherever god has placed us in our places of, of work and in community or whatever we must go there and be the 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 representation to touch and change people's lives yeah. not not everybody uh, is sent to be a pastor not everybody is sent to be an evangelist but God says, uh, I'm looking for a man and here am I. And he said, I will send you and you will go and bring healing and restoration to people's lives, you know? So mm -hmm. I thank God for shifting our thinking pattern there, you know? Mm -hmm. And then your second question about, um, about Shane and I uh, serving together uh, in ministry. Firstly, I have to tell you that I have an amazing husband, eh? And he just only makes me look so good. So, uh, I, I, you know, I thank God um, for our covenant. And I thank God that uh, he brought us both uh, together. I'll share a little bit just now about um, the little history of behind that. But, um, you know, just to share alongside uh, together as one, you know, as the spirit as of one company. Um, and the first thing I think is that we see ourselves uh, as son of God, not yes. male, not female, but we are sons of God. And that, um, you know, God has gr gifted Shane with his own gracings and giftings. And yes. he's gifted me as well with my own giftings and and gracings and we are both grace carriers and yes. that when we both come together we come together in agreement and we come together in the power of one um yes. and and it's not just relegated to a couple or uh you know just married couples but god has called you he's put his sovereign hand upon you and he's placed giftings and graces in your hand that wherever he's put you, you can function in the same way, you know, um, and you can bring your portion in whatever measure that he would allow you to. And this is 
what he chose both of us to do. So, um, and it's not just about what Shane and I do on a Sunday morning. It's every person that is seated in the house. Every one of them have to bring their portion. The worship team have to bring their portion. Each son, each daughter have to bring their portion. Each prayer of the gathering of the saints together sends out a reverberation with the spirit. You know, together we take on the enemy. Together we are fighting the battle. Yeah. So it's it's all of us collaborating together. It's all of us synergizing together. It's all of us strategizing together because we are fighting this battle together, all yeah. one company of people together, you know. So I thank God that um, together we can do this. Together the both assignments are put together and each one of us, um, can bring our portion and we can do the mandate and finish the course well. Yeah, it's actually beautiful to witness that because it's quite evident, um, you know, in, in the work that you are, you are both busy with. And um, so you speak about oneness and you speak about covenant. And let's talk a little bit about family because you have a son, uh, Randall, right, Randy? Yes. And uh, he, who's quite successful at sport and a daughter sanctuary. I'm sure yeah. she is uh, dynamite in her own right. Yeah. Um, so, so, and you work, and you do ministry. Um, so, how does it all fit into this little diamond called Rita? Yeah. So, you know, it's just only the grace of God that gives us the strength every moment. I have to tell you that. You know. Yeah. So, I think uh, one of my my biggest things, and I always say to women or whoever that I like, you know, uh, speak to. You know, the, the phrase for us, and I think you'll you'll identify so much with what I'm about to say is that you got to get up, dress up and just show up yeah. and bring your heart, bring your giftings and bring all of yourself and be present. Yeah. You know, you know, one of the things that Shane and I prioritized, obviously, um, we both are pastors kids, you know, and we both have witnessed our parents come through. Uh, years of ministry, you know, and we saw some of the struggles that they had to go through uh, in the early days of ministry, yeah. you know, um, and most pastor's kids, I think, can identify with the story of being just left at home while our parents had to go and pray and counsel and, 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 their and people. yeah and do all of that you know and we passed as kids we just left home and had to fend and find a way but you know the thing is I I I say this with such deep respect for my parents and and um my mom-in-law and my dad and uh, right now because you know it's the thing of and like your parents as well Nishani they did what they knew best how to do for their yeah. given time and their situation you know mm -hmm. um through, you know they, they served so passionately they gave the 110 percent with the no little social that media. They had, no, with no, no social food, media. nothing you know and they just they just kept going <laughs> in their bones all they knew was just preach and teach and and save the whole world and they gave everything so completely you know unselfish and 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 i i think one of the things that shane and i uh did was that we said that uh if we're gonna go into ministry and do this you know one of the things we need to do is prioritize and that means that you know uh, be it whether my son is playing um, a match. Oh, I have to share this. I'm a very proud mom this, uh, today that Randall uh, was just um, selected to be part of the South African indoor squad for the under three, under 23 squad, sorry, under 23 indoor squad. I mean, he's only 17 years wow. old. But yeah. this child has such a passion and you can see, you know, the domain of spot is in his blood uh, and, and he's so passionate uh, about this and he does so well. So that meant that when my child needs me on, this, on that soccer field or on that hockey field, 
I'm going to be there. I'm mm -hmm. learning not to scream so much and embarrass him anymore, but I'm there, you know. Um, whether my daughter needs me to be there for her at any given time, when she needs the support of her dad just to put his arms around her or me to wipe a tear for her, I'm there for her and I will be there for her, you know. Um, and then or not to say that we'll neglect, when we need to be there for people, we are there for people. You know, it's a thing of prioritizing. And, and when you are there, you show up 110% there and be there for them, you know, um, yeah. and give it your all. Whether When I need to be at work, I'm at work and I'm there. I'm there to serve. I'm there to do the best to my ability. Uh, or, you know, it's, it's just about raising up um, uh, times and, and making it work, you know, God has given us the grace to govern and the power to prevail. You know, the statements of, I can do all things, I can do all things through Christ, you know, uh, and nothing is impossible. He gives us that unction and that grace every single day to get up, dress up, and just show up. And just show up and be fully <laughs> present. So thank you for that. And and what is your, um, what is your view on, on, on this, you know, on where family is now and some of the, the heartache that, that we are experiencing as families yeah in this COVID time you know that there is such a painful subject right now yeah. for me you know um you know it it just pains my heart and 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 if you ask me what i'm so passionate about i i would have to say um uh, i i just love people and i love uh, to build family units and strong marriages so that not just for that, but just for our next generation, you know, that's yeah. where my heartbeat is that our children will be saved, that our children will do better, you know, our children uh, will will finish well and they will have everything. It scares me, you know, from where we've come from to how things have changed in this given day and age and time. It's scary out there, but it's the real world, you know. Um, so my, my thoughts for family is that, you know, the first thing is that families must be built on God and his word, you know. Um, and, and, if, if we have God, which is such the big component in a family unit, uh, God is a God of love and he wants every family to live together in peace, in joy, in righteousness. You know, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And, and righteousness is to be in right standing, right standing with each other, to communicate, to talk, to love, to share, to enjoy, you know, each other. Um, and if you ask me personally, then my line, and I think I, I shared this with you, is that it's yeah. hashtag, it starts with me. <laughs> I have to bring my caution to this, you know. Yeah. Um, I have to be present and I have to do my best, you know, as a mother, as a wife, um, as, uh, as an employee, whatever it is in my hands, I have to do my best. And then to know that love never fails, love conquers yeah. all, you yeah. know, you know, this whole thing about being so self-centered and so self-ambitious that we kill people in the process, you know, Paul says that we have to die daily. Yes. And I always say to our house, just die, just die, you know, you know, you have to die to yourself every day, you know, we always want it to be my way or no way. But yeah. in, in life, that doesn't go that way all the time. you got to sacrifice, you know, and love. What is love? Love is a choice. It's a doing word. You have to sacrifice, you know. You have to make sacrifices to, to, for the whole tribe to be restored, for everybody to live in harmony. And, and it scares me that sometimes people want to just justify their actions and everyone else is wrong. You know, I always say to the people or the young people in my house, every now and again, you know, I'm just saying, just maybe, just maybe every now and again, I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and, and as long as we take that posture of we, are, we have arrived and we know it all, you know, it, that is such a breakdown. It is such a breakdown to put up walls and to push people rather than bringing them in. 
and mm. and you know we learn from each other so you know family is about hand to get uh, hand to hand eye to eye feet to feet you know not breaking rank shoulder to shoulder not leaving yeah. anybody behind because mm. we are in all in all of us are in it together and we are all going on to the other side so yeah. you know my challenge and my hope and my prayer is for families to build strong together. You know, I mean, I, I think you can identify because you have so many sisters and a brother of all the joyous times of growing together as yeah. one family, you know, sharing those moments together. But as time has gone and, um, you know, time moves on and people grow and marry and become bigger, sometimes we forget those those little uh, sacred traditions of family and and you know love and sharing those beautiful christmases together and all those special moments together yeah. so family is such a strong component because if the family break down breaks down marriage breaks down and then yeah. children break down and then that spirals into the community and to a nation and hence we're fighting for a nation. We are. We are fighting. I mean, I think the marriage, the amount of people marrying now in South Africa is about 30%. So that's a very, very low number. Even globally, it's quite a low number. So tell us a little bit about, and I can see how passionate you are about this. Tell us a little bit about the uh, marriage seminars and the marriage courses that you, you will be running. Um, you know, I, I, a couple of years ago, um, Shane and I felt that it was very imperative and very important um, that we always take couples and make time to um, uh, build marriages up. And so one of the criteria for a couple that wants to get married is that they have to go through a premarital course or, you know, to share, you know, when we make growing up we never had the privilege of sitting uh, and being counseled and somebody give us a picture of you know what to say what to do <laughs> how to no. face the marriage no. and no we just dived into it we thank god you know we trusted god and we went for it and thank god for his all sufficient grace that helped us to come through some of those challenges you know and that's why we found it that it's so imperative to to help couples to build you know that you know and and marriage is not just about falling in love and being happy clappy and coming together and you know eventually uh having children and all of that there's more to to marriage you know god is bringing two people for kingdom assignment together yeah to fulfill purpose, to, to complete and uh, fulfill destiny together, you know, that you will come together and I will come together and together we can touch other people's lives that as God will bless our union and our covenant, that we will be blessed to be a blessing to somebody else, you know, um, mm. and covenant is a thing of covering, you know, um, love never fails, you know, today in society, um, the, the, the small fight or the small thing we want to quit and throw in the towel mm -hmm. and we want to give up, you know, but, uh, you know, love is not a thing of I'm falling or I'm falling out, uh -uh, I'm falling out of love, you know, love is a choice, you make a choice to love somebody you choose. And then love is a doing word I always say to our couples in church. Uh, you know, after the honeymoon is over and after you uh, say how much you love each other, you have to get up the next day and go work <laughs> and provide. And love is like how Father God loves us, that every single day we are building our relationship with God. We are loving him and how Christ loved the church, you know, as his bride. And that too, so too, we have to work at loving each other. We have to stay committed to the end, you know. Uh, so that's why we wanted to um, host this married seminar just to help to rekindle the joy, rekindle the seeds of, of biblical principles in, in the marriage, you know, build these foundations right, realign the marriage to the godly pattern, not what the world says that, you know, it's okay to 
um, to quit or it's okay to give up or it's okay to throw in the towel. No, we're signing, we're signing up for keeps. We want to see it finish, you know, and we're not just building for that. Again, I want to say we're building for the next generation and it mm. just doesn't stop at man and wife, but it must flow from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. It must flow, you know, so love is unconditional and love must be love with love intentionally and forgive over and over and over and over again <laughs> yeah that's quite funny but quite easy to do i'm sure and you know i always say uh people say fall in love but i always say you know if it's love you will rise in love yes you know, you rise in love as, as a as an individual and as a couple um, so if people wanted to know more about this or were keen to, to find out about the Dutch course, where would they, or how would they do it? Would they just link with you on uh, social media or? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. They are more than welcome to connect with us. Um, we just wanted to do, uh, keep it as a private invitation, obviously open, but only mm. by invitation, you know. Yeah. So we are happy to invite and share the link. Uh, whoever wants to join with us, it's absolutely, you absolutely welcome to whatever seeds of hope we can bring into your marriage to go to from ordinary to extraordinary, you know. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it's the little things, it's the little things, it's the little foxes that we don't see that come and take us out, you know, and it's these little things that we have to uh, all the time talk about, all the time revisit and address. Mm. So, uh, you know, the times are changing, things are changing, but God's words and his principles do not change, you know, that stands forever, but we can keep building on that, you know, to continue to keep moving forward in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rita, I know you feel very strongly about this, and uh, we've had many messages to women in the last month, in, we've had many women speakers, um, and we have many, many messages, and I think women are very also keen to hear, oh, like, you know, how can I improve, what must I do differently, but what is your message to men this evening? You know, I, I am waiting for the day where men will heal themselves totally to God because, yeah. you know, after they heal themselves completely to God and allow God to embrace them and take a hold of them completely to be immersed in his love, to be immersed um, in his uh, forgiveness. You know, one of the, the biggest things is, you know, the word says now there is no condemnation. You know, yeah. and, and I think men have such inward struggles sometimes that a lot of them are where they are and what they go through is because of um, hard upbringings and where they've come from and the struggles that they, they've had to go through and endure growing up sometimes with no proper fatherly figures in their life that could love them and show them the right things and way to do, you know? Um, and, and I pray that, that the men that are there already, I think, I think that, that the biggest thing is that they must become the voice of hope and help the other men to come in, you know, and find their place and restore the whole generation because, um, we need men, we need good, strong men to rise up because in this land and in South Africa right now, every other home um, have just single parenting with mm. absent fathers. We need fathers to come and stay and we need fathers to be the protector, to be the priest of the home. We need good godly fathers that will respect the wife, not as a slave, but to compliment them, you know, to stand alongside together in one spirit, in one accord, and as the, as the spirit of one man together, together doing great exploits, you know, we're not being intimidated that if the woman has to go and work and bring her portion, she's going to go work to bring her portion so all of us together can enjoy. The blessings of the Lord maketh us rich and add no sorrow. You know, and, and, and they, they can't be all these struggles anymore. You know, when we are sons of God, there's peace in the home. Mm. Um, we don't fight each other. 
we are ad addressing issues together. We're not attacking each other. We're addressing issues together that so we can all stay together. You know, um, in the Bible, there's a story of all gen or three generations staying in one camp together in peace. You know, yes. there must be a new day for South Africa. There must be a new day for our land where um, our men must be strong and be take that rightful place in your home because I believe that every struggle that you've been through in your life um, can only make you better. You can only want better for your children. You can only want better for your family, you know? And, and, and uh, your family are your greatest fans. They are gonna push you and they're gonna encourage you, you know, uh, to keep going. They are your support structure. When you are feeling weak, they're gonna come alongside you and raise up your hands and say, keep going, you can do this because we are here and together we're gonna do it. So. You know, my, my, my message to every son of God, not just men and men, to every son of God, you are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood. You know, God has set his divine sovereign hand upon your life and you can do it. You know, um, my father-in-law says every time that the message and the messenger must become one. You know, some men, sometimes we, be, we, we hide behind uh, the facade and the mask. And when you go home, it's a different story. You know, we must be real now. We must be real because our children are watching and we are modeling it before them. And we can't set the spears in their lives anymore. My daughter, Sancia, uh, must be so confident uh, in, in the partner that God will bring for her because her father has showed her what a good godly man must be like, you know. She must feel at peace and at ease about it. You know, my son, I'm trying to raise him to be the best man, not for now, but for one day he will be the best husband to somebody out there, you know. So yeah. we got to believe. I mean, we are believing in every man, and I'm praying that they will believe in themselves that they can do it. You know, they passed. Um, is the past. God has created us and when we found him, we are new creatures in him. All things are passed away and they have become brand new. So they, they need to take on the identity of Father God, you know, and, and walk in that stature of, of him. Not to rule with the iron rod, but to rule in the sonship of Father God, you know. Yeah, wow, that's really powerful. That's absolutely powerful. Speaks a lot about identity, you know, identity as well, and who, yes. knowing, who, knowing who you are. And you know, I must say, I mean, men men have also come from a culture where, especially uh, culturally, you know, there was no space to to talk about issues, hardships, sure. tears, yeah. even, you know. But uh, like you said, the healing comes with God. Um, Rita, we have come almost to the end and before I start chatting about a little bit of um, the seeds that we want to plant this week what is your message of hope sure. yeah so what is your message of um, hope sure um, you know, <coughs> so you know the the passionate thing that I am about as passionate as I am about the the next generation who um, I said all that I said this evening is just so that um, our children can do even greater and be even greater, you know. Um, and one of the one of the key things for me, I think, is that you know, at a very a very young age, um, like Richard and and maybe if, yeah, I think even you as well, that we all grew up um, in the most exciting time of our life that. We didn't have the opportunity to travel afar and go abroad uh, growing up. But for us, uh, the biggest thing we looked forward for was a youth camp that yes. we got to go to. Yes. You know, we get yes. so excited to pack our bags and go away <laughs> for the weekend, you know. Uh, yes. But I have to say that I thank God for those moments in our life because uh, that is where something uh, so significant happened, you know, for us because, you know, camp was, even though it was fun and all of that, 
But those moments were God encounter moments for yeah. us, you know, and nobody had to come and push us or, uh, or uh, you know, uh, co-hoax anything. It was just you and God yeah. locked in together, you know, yeah. uh, in those in those sessions, in those moments of you crying before God, weeping before God and feeling God touched the inner core of you. Yeah. You know that you know that you know that, you know that something you. happened inside of you. And, and that they can be relegated to any person or anything. Okay. It was just a divine connection that we felt God's hand upon our life, you know? And no matter how much we messed up in our life along after that, but that was always a catalyst and a pivotal point of our life that we can always make reference to because we know that that there was our connection to God. And that's where our relationship became so intense because we hungered for him. And, and that's my biggest cry that this generation will hunger for the fire of God upon their life, you know, that they won't look to a man or to a person to bring things to happen to their life, but God and God himself will do it for them, you know? That was the, that passion uh, that was created inside of me. And then, you know, my, my father was a big uh, component in my life and my parents as well, because he showed me how to love. Through the scars of ministry, um, they, they showed me that love was unconditional, you know? Any person that walked into our house would never leave without a, a, a plate of food. You know, hospitality was such a big thing in our lives. And I would think we don't even have so much for ourselves. How are we going to bless? But I saw God's hand of provision upon our lives, you know. Uh, so you, it, it's, it's your upbringing. It's your family structure that you have that is so great. Uh, in support of you, you know, um, to keep going and doing what you can do. And then I'm so blessed uh, with mom and dad in our lives as well. You know, when we stepped into ministry, it's not easy uh, for a man that has given his life 50 years in the ministry yeah. to just hand over the reins to young to a young man coming up, you know. Yeah. But but you know, fathers of this caliber are just beyond, you know, where, you know, dad always says, uh, ordinary is when I can do the work, but extraordinary is when my sons can do it, wow. you know, and, and, you know, mom and dad have been so gracious to us to give, hand over the ministry to us and, and, you know, just allow Shane and I to run with the vision and to do everything that we are called to do, you know, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, we just honor them and we love them because uh, honor is a key component in the kingdom, you know, uh, and I thank God for them. And, and you know, my seed of hope this evening is that, um, you know, this has been a year like nothing we've experienced in our lifetime. Yeah. But yeah. I believe when life seems to hit the pause button, God can use it to prepare us for something even better. So, you know, I want to say to every listener this evening, don't feel like nothing is happening. God has been building stature within you. He has been configuring some deep things within you. And, you know, God is downloading some software in your spirit, a road we've never been down before. You know, he's programming the path ahead for amazing things to happen. You know, what you thought was just a setback is actually a setup for the yeah. greater things yet to come. So don't get stuck, but just keep advancing and keep moving forward. You know, we're going to get through this uh, and we're going to come through this better than we were before. You know, new dreams uh, are gonna going to spring up in your heart and, and new opportunities and ideas are coming. Uh, your way, new perspectives are going to open and new doors of heavens are going to be open in your life. The key to receiving God's new work in your life this evening is don't go back to business as usual. 
this is the time to stand in faith. And I'm not just saying faith. I'm saying like Nishani and I are women of great faith to believe that God is doing something new in you, for you, and through you. You know, don't fight the things you don't understand because God is ordering your steps. Even when it doesn't even make sense right now, and I love this and I keep this so dear to my heart. God is working all things, the big things, the small things, the tiny things, even the bad things. But we know that God is working all things for our good. So I yeah. bless you with those little seeds of hope this evening. Thank you. You know, and, and, you know, following on from what you're saying, it's so important because I was, you know, as you were chatting, I was thinking about those youth camps and I yeah. think I must have been 14 when God downloaded some heavy dreams, some big dreams into my own heart, which yeah. I'm only seeing coming to fruition now in my life, you know, almost yeah. over 30 years later. But also um, what we, and, and what you said was so exciting because God is doing new things his way. Yes. And he's showing us uh, different angles and different ways of um, of raising each other up, yeah. of being of pulling together as a family, and of 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 helping one another. You know, one yeah. of the things about succeed and the work that we do, not just in succeed, but with our social entrepreneurship, and actually, I want to say our kingdom business, is that we believe in in, in preserving the dignity of human every person. You know. Yeah. And one of the things is how do we preserve the dignity by creating, we've created this week and we've seen an amazing shift and an energy, a burst yes. of energy in this week where God is saying to us, you know what, this business is going to be about him. This is an ethical business yes. where we are taking people alongside us. What we've done is we've created a business and taken away every barrier to entry for entrepreneurs to come alongside us. Amen. And we're willing, yes. to give, we're willing to give back more than 10% back into the space, you know. And so one of the things, beside it being a fantastic product, the pricing is right. Like, like I said, it's ethical. We're standing under an open heaven. We want it yes. accessible. We want it accessible for every single person. We mm -hmm. want it. We want it to be affordable. We want people to be able to buy it over and over again. So our lifestyle range is nothing over a hundred rand, you know. Yeah. And, and what we've done is we've allowed for agents and for people to come alongside us and say, you know, I'd like to be an agent, and we're be, be giving back to them. Um, yeah. And I just yeah. want to introduce this is such a beautiful bottle. It is such a beautiful brand. Have a look. Yes. yes. Me goosebumps <laughs> it gives me goosebumps every time I see a picture going out every time I see a delivery going out it's really really exciting this is our new brand it's called Kronos um, Richard developed this um, the, the branding and the the name of the product um, from the ingredients of the glucathione which is our signature product and uh, they say it, well, Dr. Oz says it's the mother of all oxidants but I believe everybody should be taken especially if you're over 35 um, and Richard developed it, and it means it means time in the Greek way, and and it's it's really about Kronos reversing time because you know when we are when we are fulfilling the mandate of God in our lives, let me tell you it's not easy. There's resistance, and you've yes. got to have your health. You've got to yes. have your health. You've got to have your energy, especially when we're coming into the many of us are coming into the latter part of our lives. And we've, we've got to have that strength and that, that, that foot spa, that energy to, to keep going. And so we want, to, we want to introduce this. We want to put this into every hand. And we're very excited about sowing the seed um, this week. And going forward, we're going to be doing this as well. So please be in touch um, uh, with either Richard or myself. Or go to our Kronos online page on Facebook and follow us there. Um, we are absolutely pumped and excited about it so um and again it is not something that uh, that we can say oh my goodness we're so clever and so wise god is showing us step by step and this is only by his grace that um yeah. that this is being established yeah you know i mean you know when i talked about uh the new 
ideas and yeah. the the new vision and and just look what God has done. It's just been amazing, you know, um, the the creativity that God mm -hmm. has brought forth. You know, uh, it's in the little things we see God in everything. You know, yeah. in every fine detail, we see the hand of God. Uh, yeah. his, his blueprint upon it so you know I just declare great success to be you guys portion um, and God will continue to open the doors for you because um, you know success and winning is in your DNA you know mm -hmm. every battle is winnable God will align uh, the strategic people to bring into you guys lives so that this business will continue to prosper um, and be and bring much fruit. So I just bless you guys and bless the team. Uh, thank you for such a great evening and allowing me the privilege of just sharing my um, seeds of thought and my seeds of hope to every person out there. Uh, grace and peace and the strength of God continue to be your portion as we continue to go through this time and come up, come out on top. We are not defeated. It ain't over yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love your energy, Rita. It's been contagious. Your energy is absolutely contagious. Um, thank you so much. Thank you on behalf of Richard and myself and Patrick and all the listeners. Thank you for, for sowing your life so openly with us and for sharing your passion, for igniting hope. Um, you know, we feel energized on a Friday evening where, you know, after a long week, we, we in the energy zone again and that is really uh, your gifting is to impart that um, that energy and that inspiration so thank you on behalf of all of us um, for thank you yeah, yeah thank you and um, to our viewers and to all our Facebook family uh, on behalf of Richard and myself Patrick I'd like to say may God bless you may God make his face to shine upon you and may you grow from strength to strength and may hope always light your way God bless you and good night.